later in the program. Right now, let's go to our guest, Speaker of the House, Kurt Zellers, who it says on my uh, show sheet is a rising political star. How did that get on there, Speaker Zellers? Are you paying off the producer? I, maybe they thought uh, that there was another Zellers or Geller or no, I there's, I have no idea. <laughs> tell us about the... Chris will do. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about the, uh, the, the Viking Stadium. Uh, clearly, uh, I clarify, no, no bill in the state... Um, well, to, to to help pass, you're, you're saying, I, I guess here, I, maybe I'm not understanding. Um, explain to us, what's your position on the Viking Stadium? You're not supportive? Well, I, I'm not supportive of a, of a cash payment from the state of Minnesota. Now, if there's a creative solution that involves people who go to the game, you know, there's been talk of a scratch-off game. You know, you go out and buy a Minnesota State lottery ticket. Uh, the proceeds from that go right to the stadium or to finance the stadium. Uh, you know, there's seat licensure, there's naming rights. There's there's a number of things that if <clears throat> you're a Vikings fan like I am and go to the game, although I don't go to as many games as I used to now that I have small kids, but uh, if you go to the game and you're part of the game, you're going to pay for the stadium. Uh, if you're not a part of the game and you don't like sports, you prefer not to pay for it, then you don't have to. And I think that's if there's an overriding uh, probably concern or, you know, where we see this, that's the, to me, that's the most important thing. And I think that's where most Minnesotans are. And nobody wants to see the team leave. Uh, you know, I would really hope that that would never, ever happen. And after 50 years of history and, and tradition, I don't think they want to do that either. So it'll involve a creative solution. But uh, I just, we, you know, the city of Minnesota is fresh out of cash. Uh, we are in a budget deficit, you know, the, earlier this year, and, you know, the economy doesn't look like it's roaring back, but coming back again. So uh, we just don't have the money to write out a $300 million check uh, to the Vikings organization. Would uh, so, so what you're talking about essentially is a user fee, you know, essentially taxpayers being able to opt in if they like the Vikings or what have you. Uh, they'll be the ones paying for the stadium, and other people who maybe don't watch football uh, wouldn't be burdened by it. Is that that's the sort of solution you're looking for? Yeah, exactly. And, and how that comes about, how you know, creative it is, if there's you know one approach or the other, if it's like I said, if it, you know, I, I've I've said a couple of different times that you know, in, in some cases when people build new stadiums, whether you know or or are a part of something, you can buy a brick or buy you know, a, uh, spend a hundred dollars as a fan and and have part ownership, you know, something like that. That if me as a fan, uh, I want to go in and you know spend my two hundred bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever it is. To help build that stadium, uh, I, I'm more than willing to do that. But those that, that don't want to build a stadium, then they can choose not to participate. I know one proposal was a uh, a sports merchandise tax on in in that in the you know specific county where the stadium is going to be. Is that something that that would meet muster for 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 the sort of criteria you're setting out for what you would support? Well, I, I think I don't think so because it wasn't just for uh, Vikings apparel it was for the wild it was for the timberwolves it was for the twins so it was all sports apparel and again um if that tax is going to go for the and you know all professional sports i mean I, i'm assuming that they all are uh, respective of each other in their different sports but if this is for one sport then you know you're taxing all sports all memorabilia for all different sports so i don't think that and, and again it's a you know it's a sales tax that if, if i don't know that would actually you know have enough generate enough revenue also for the financing you know i i think i i think there, there seems i mean to me your position makes perfect sense to me i i i don't really like the idea of, of publicly financed stadiums and things like that in general what you're asking for is essentially if you're a vikings fan you're the one who's going to pay for the stadium that to me is, is a perfectly logical position it has nothing to do with liking or disliking football or the vikings or what have you i mean to me that's just sound public policy but it seems like a lot of of columnists anytime you or or uh, amy coke uh, uh, make comments about this it's like you know that they want to believe that that you hate the vikings and you want the vikings to leave that's a little unfair i think uh, well I, yeah i agree and then th thank you for agreeing with me and lately that's not been something that happens in public policy <laughs> and lots of people disagreeing with us but uh and and yeah absolutely it, it's 100 percent right like i said i'm a, a, a diehard vikings fan I, I played college football i think football is one of the you know <laughs> best sports to play for kids and uh, to learn about team building. I mean, it's a, it's a great thing. It's one of our greatest traditions here in Minnesota. So it has absolutely nothing to do with me disliking 
yeah. a, uh, a Viking stadium, or the, the team, but it's just making sure that the public, which, you know, I, I would tell you if you look at some of the polling data, you know, there's over 60% of the public that do not want to publicly finance a stadium. So uh, we also have to be respectful of the will of the people. I, I, and I think I think that makes perfect sense. I mean, personally, I'm not a football fan. Um, never have been. I'm a baseball guy. I like uh, I like baseball a lot better. That's my particular sport. Uh, so, and and I think especially in these economic times, and I think that's the other question is how much is the economy uh, playing a role in this? I mean, you've got Americans; they're out of job. Minnesotans, you know, they don't have jobs. They've we've got this this creeping regulatory. I, I think a lot in a lot of ways, the public's waking up to a lot of this. They're tired of taxes. They're tired of regulation. I, I think for a lot of them, uh, the last thing on their mind is is paying another tax to subsidize a football stadium. You're exactly right, too, especially about the economy. I mean, people are looking around at what they're having to do in their families or with their at their jobs. Uh, their employer is saying, look, we're, you know, Bob's going to retire next year, and we're not going to replace Bob. So his salary is now going to be some savings for us, but that's going to mean that everybody else is going to have to pick up the slack or to, to take on some of Bob's activity, his job, his work in the day. So it's what people see every day, and I'll tell you, Rob, so here's, here's an example. When I was out door knocking last fall, pretty good neighborhood, you know, some nice houses, and walked up, and the guy said, I, I said, well, what do you think we should do to, to save some money or, you know, how at the capital? And he said, this is how our, me and my neighbors have done it. Garbage truck, uh, gar- new garbage collector came around. Uh, guy said he was, uh, oh, I can, well, I'm going to finish it a little bit. Well, I, I tell you what, yeah, why don't we hold on to that story? We'll, we'll move this into the next segment. Talking with Minnesota House Speaker Kurt Zellers, I'm Rob Port, sitting in for the Chairman Scott Hennon, 855-200-1776. Going to go to a break. Be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back, Rob Port, back with you again, and uh, our guest currently, uh, sp- uh, Minnesota Speaker of the House, Kurt Zellers. Uh, Kurt, you were, you were finishing a point there before the break. I wanted to let you uh, finish. Rob, it's just an uh, example of where most Minnesotans are, your, to your point exactly, about the economy and tough times. And uh, these neighbors had all gotten together, and a, a new uh, sanitation company had come by and said, we'll give you, you know, $30 a month if you, just you, you get five of your neighbors, we'll do it for $25. But, well, this guy was retired, so he went and got 10 of his neighbors. And when the guy came back, he said, tell you what, we've got 10, and we'll give you 20 bucks a month. So if most Minnesota, and this is, like I said, a pretty nice neighborhood, uh, really nice houses, if they're willing to save 10 bucks a month on their garbage pickup, shouldn't the state of Minnesota, shouldn't the federal government look at their budget and see where they can cut corners, where they can reduce costs, where they can reduce spending? You know, and and that's been a theme of yours as you've been uh, you've been touring about. I know you were recently uh, over in uh, the western part of your state, near the eastern part of our state here in North Dakota, uh, talking about what it's going to take for economic recovery. And, and one thing I'm reading a headline here. It says, uh, according to you, streamlining government is the key to economic recovery. What does that explain to us? What does that mean? Sure. Well, and a lot of it is, uh, you know, and it's really sexy stuff, Rob. That you know, I'm sure it'll show up on the front page of the Forum or the Grand Forks Herald. You know, cutting down the red tape or the time it takes for us to process a permit. You know, what we found, and, and now with this, you know, wide open economy and, you know, some of the western North Dakota oil fields, we've got Minnesota contractors going out there and building projects, and they come back, or maybe they're down in Austin, Texas, working on a project. They'll come back and they'll say, you know, it took us six weeks or it took us six hours to get this permit or to get this license in Texas, Colorado, wherever it is. When we came home, it takes six months. Why does it take so long, and why do I have to come into an office when every other state or some other states have us do it online, we put in our credit card, the license is good, we print it out, and we're good to go? It's, it's little things like that that our business owners tell us, and then it's also very big things. Um, House File 1, which is a, a bill carried by Dan Fabian up in the northwest corner there near Warro Roseau, uh, we had a business owner email us, and his project manager had looked at the law and looked at the project that they were working on over the winter. It was going to save them two to three hundred thousand dollars and shave three to six months off their construction time. That's real jobs. Those are real private sector jobs, not public sector jobs. And that additional funds, maybe the building gets to be a little bit bigger. Maybe they hire a new sales staff member because they've got extra money, or maybe they reinvest it in technology in their company. And that's what's going to get us out of this mess. It's not going to be the government subsidizing car companies, banks, insurance companies, uh, windows, you know, you name it. We've tried that. So don't even believe me as a Republican that that didn't work. Just, you know, from your own lying eyes, 
decide whether or not government subsidizing things has worked. It hasn't. We're still you know, hovering around 9%, 10% unemployment, depending on the state and the region. So why don't we get government out of the way, off the backs, and out of the pockets of our business owners, particularly small and medium-sized business owners, and let them start to rebuild their business, and they will in turn raise our economy and will actually re- increase the amount of revenue that the states of you know, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota are going to receive. You know, I, I used to work in the retail industry, and one thing that we always talked about when, uh, you know, managing the stores was uh, that we should make the sales easy. We should make it easy for the customer. They shouldn't have to work hard to buy the product. You want the price clearly marked. You want the product in an easy place to get to. You, you, you want it to be so inviting, it just sort of floats its way into their cart. I mean, that's how you make good sales. Really, yeah. I, I think you could apply that same thinking to the economy. Make it easy to do business. Make it easy to start a business. Make it easy to hire employees. Make it easy to find. I mean, make it easy to do all the things that you got to do to, 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 to run a business. And when you do that, people run businesses and they create prosperity. I mean, this stuff isn't rocket science. Unfortunately, Kurt, I sometimes wonder uh, uh, if, if you people like you and I are on an island about this stuff. It seems. <laughs> well, a- anyway, that, let me. Yeah, uh, it sorry, is, go ahead. Is, no, it is, and, and the good news is that's the the majorities we have in the Minnesota House and Senate. That's we believe, like you believe, Rob, that it is not rocket science. It is it is very simple. It's very easy to do, but you have to have the will to do it, and you, then you have to have the fortitude to follow through. And, yes, make a bet on the private sector. I have far more belief in the business women and men of the upper Midwest than I do in government. They will rebuild our economy, not a government stimulus program. I want to ask you a question about unions. I know Governor Dayton has a question before him uh, uh, to uh, whether or not to issue an executive order uh, that would unionize the state's daycare workers. What, what exactly is this? How, how is it that the governor can issue an executive order to unionize what, what I'm assuming here are private businesses? Yeah, you know, when we looked at this, and I, I sent out, I sent a letter over to the governor yesterday. We looked through the the Minnesota Constitution, and he does not have the authority. Um, it would be a, a bad idea. And, in a lot of cases, you know, my, my wife and I uh, sent our daughter and son to an in-home private daycare. You know, the, a daughter and uh, her mom who run the daycare. They run it together. They're a partnership. So I don't know how they're going to unionize themselves. It makes absolutely no sense. You have to have well, an employer What's, what's an the justification? Yeah, what, what, what's the justification here? Because I, 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 I heard a similar story about this a couple of years ago where the state of Michigan was doing it on the premise that these daycares were taking government assistance, state assistance. So they were essentially coming out and saying, well, because you're taking this assistance, you're de facto state employees. Is that is that the logic they're applying here? You know, I, I'll, I'll be uh, dang if I know, Rob. But this is, uh, <laughs> again, if you are the sole owner, you're, you know, it's your side, your daycare you are the only person that is ever at any time during the day giving care to children i don't know how you unionize yourself so i i am i'm 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 assuming this is uh you know some of the folks at sdiu who've been trying to unionize you know everything from dog walkers to tree trimmers to you know now daycare workers it's you know in the 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 last throws of the unions in in our great country have probably seen their usefulness now you're just going to raise costs especially in these tough economic times, like you were saying earlier, you really want to have young families with two small kids or three small kids who are paying a lot of money. Believe me, it costs a lot to have daycare. You're not going to raise that yeah. price by 20 30% in these tough times? That is just absolutely absurd. I want to seek in another question here. As as Governor Dayton considers this unionization for daycare workers, we have another uh, union issue going on over here in the Red River Valley, American Crystal Sugar uh, lockout Uh just been confirmed of late, uh, and it's making national news now. Some some of the union uh, uh, protesters uh, guilty of making racial remarks to uh, replacement workers. At one point, I, apparently there was a, a monkey hung in effigy. Just hateful, awful stuff. Do you think that's something Governor Dayton, as a as a union supporter, should condemn? Well, I, I think uh, I think we all should. You know, you have every right in under a collective bargaining agreement to go in and to fight for a good wage to ask for a raise, and if the employer can and agrees with you, you can negotiate that in the collective bargaining agreement at the table. This kind of thing is just ugly. It's, it, from, from my perspective, I think everybody should condemn these kind of actions, and I include the union. The, you know, the folks that are out there picketing, 
I, I know a lot of northern Minnesotans and North Dakotans that would look at that and say, that's hateful. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that in our name. So I think we all should. And I think it's something that, you know, sadly, uh, you know, when emotions run high, we're talking about people's wages and the ability to provide for their family. I, I understand that emotions run high, but it in no way excuses this kind of activity. And it, it really is. It's a, it's a black eye on all of us. Well, uh, Speaker Zeller, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the program. appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, Rob. Anytime. Nice. Heck of a job filling in for the chairman. Well, thank you. I do my best. Speaker Kurt Zellers, uh, he's on loan to Minnesota from North Dakota, by the way. He's a North Dakota native UND grad. We sent him over there. We're trying to kick uh, Minnesota back into shape. I'm Rob Port, sitting in for the chairman, Scott Hennon. We'll be back right after this. We're going to talk vaccines. Don't- 